Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We are in 1 Peter chapter 3, and we will be finishing verse 18 and getting into verse 19 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we saw here last lesson, he says, being put to death in the flesh. And we saw that that phrase, being put to death, is in the passive voice. And it means that Jesus Christ was passively put to death. And we also saw that who was it that put Jesus to death? Well, first it was God who had, who planned salvation that Jesus would die on the cross. Secondly, it was us. Our sins is what caused Jesus to die on the cross. And then thirdly, it was, it was, uh, Jesus Christ himself who willingly gave up his life, laid down his life for our sake. And then it says here, so he being put to death in the flesh now, but quickened by the spirit. And this Greek word for quickened is zuapoyeo, zuapoyeo. And the first part is comes from zoe, and it means life. And then we have poyeo, and it means to make. And it means to make alive or to revive something. And it's also in the passive voice. So as Jesus Christ was passively put to death, so also he was passively made alive again. Now, this Greek word goes against the idea that has been around for many years that there are, there are some people who think, well, Jesus never really died, all right? He just went to sleep, or he was in a coma. All the suffering he experienced with the cat of nine tails and the beatings and the, the things he suffered at the time of the cross just caused him to go into a coma or a, or a deep sleep or something. And <laughs> no, no, the Bible says, Jesus, the body of Christ died, all right? It actually died. Now, Jesus' spirit did not die, all right? But his body did die. And Jesus' spirit was always alive. But his spirit also had to experience death. Now, what is death? Death is separation. Death does not mean ceasing to exist, all right? That's not death. Death does not mean you cease to exist. Death means a separation from one thing to another. So when we die, we are separated from this world system. All right? When something dies, it separates itself from that body and goes into another existence. All right? It ceases to exist here. And so there is a separation here. So When Jesus died on the cross, his physical body died. And his physical body is dying, but there was also a spiritual death that took place. Now, Jesus cried out on the cross, Why have you forsaken me? And that's his spiritual death. His separation from the Father. All right? The, the time that Jesus bore our sins. The Bible says that God could not have fellowship with sin. God hid his face from sin. So when Jesus died on the cross, God broke fellowship with Jesus. And his, he had, he now Jesus is experiencing spiritual death. So his body, while he was on the cross, his body was still alive but he was experiencing spiritual death at this time until the time that he cried out, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And then we know at that time, then we know that fellowship with the Father has been restored, okay? Then his physical body died and he was laid in the tomb, all right? Now, Jesus experienced physical death in that his physical body did actually die. Okay, he didn't go to sleep. 
he did actually die. And Jesus experienced spiritual death in that his spirit experienced a separation from God while on the cross. And it was only for a short time while he bore our sins. And when, when the payment for our sins was finished on the cross, then fellowship with God was restored between Jesus and the Father. The physical body that Jesus had after his resurrection is the same body that he had on earth, but now it's glorified, all right? The, the, that same body cannot die. It can pass through walls. It can transition itself from this world's existence into heaven's existence. And that's what's going to happen with us. Our physical body will die someday and it will go into the ground, but God will reunite us with our bodies, but it will be a glorified body. All right. When Jesus rose from the dead and he had this glorified body, he didn't say, well, I did die. If you want proof, go to the tomb and my old body is still there. <laughs> right. Go on and see my old earthly body. It's still in that tomb. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. His body was taken and glorified and he was reunited now with a whole new glorified body that could pass through walls and go from earth to heaven and, and do all kinds of, that. you don't need cars and bicycles and, 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 and airplanes with that body. <laughs> you can fly everywhere and do everything with that. And that's what, that kind of body we're going to be getting too. Glorified body. So he says here, being put to death in the flesh, but also now passively he was quickened by the Spirit. And then he says here in verse 19, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Now, this Greek phrase for by which is en hoi kai, en hoi kai. And this is a very interesting Greek construction we have here in 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 this phrase en hoi kai we have a preposition and this preposition can function as a locative or as an instrumental case but in this construction we also have a relative pronoun all right and the relative pronoun can function as either a masculine or as a neuter gender. Now, to find out which gender, which gender that it's referring to, en hoi kai, we have to look back to the previous verse to see which word that this pronoun is relating to. Remember, it's a relative pronoun, en hoi kai. And we've got to look back to verse 18 and see which pronoun it's relating to. And as it happens, it relates back to the neuter of spirit. So back in verse 18, it says, put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. Spirit is neuter. So this enhoi kai of by which also is referring to spirit. All right. So therefore, this phrase by which also could better be translated by which spirit also or by means of which spirit he also did something all right so jesus is going to do something his body is in the tomb now jesus christ is in spirit form for these three days until he's reunited with his glorified body for these three days he's in spirit form now and he is going to do something. And he's, Peter is telling us what Jesus is going to do in that time period. And he is in spirit form, all right? Now, so this phrase, by which also refers to the time after Jesus' physical body is dead and in the tomb, but now he's alive in his spirit form, and then he will be reunited with his physical body at the resurrection, uh, at his resurrection, when he's resurrected from the dead. All right. So he says here, by which also he went and he preached. So he went and preached. Now, the Greek word for went 
is poruomai, poruomai, and poros means a passage. It means like a ford, all right? It means to go from one place to another place, to go on a journey or to travel. So while Jesus Christ was in his spirit, he went somewhere. He traveled. In that three-day period of time, he traveled and he went on a journey. All right? <laughs> now, it's, what did he do? He went and he preached. Preached. Now, this Greek word for preached is keruso. And it means to be a herald, to proclaim. So this Greek word does not automatically mean that Jesus went and preached the good news, okay? It, it doesn't mean that he went somewhere and preached the good news. No. It means he went somewhere and he heralded something. He proclaimed something. He didn't preach the good news. If you wanted, it, it, okay, for, preach, for preaching the gospel, the Greek word would have been for evangelize, all right? Evangelize, the Greek word, uh, you, euangelizo, euangelizo is the Greek word for evangelize. It means to proclaim the gospel, preach it, all right? But that's not the Greek word that's used here for preach. It's keruso. It means to proclaim, to herald something, all right? Jesus wasn't preaching the good news, but he was making a proclamation, all right? Jesus went somewhere and he was making a proclamation. So, after Jesus died on the cross, his physical body was placed in the tomb, but his spirit and soul went on a journey to proclaim a message to some spirits that were in prison. All right? And this is where it gets interesting. And we're going to start into that next lesson. All right? Until then... Walk with the Lord, I know he walks with you.